o'clock. Yes, it um, is. The 27th of August. 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 Um, this is the debate select board. All are here. Excellent. First order of business for this evening is to call for any late additions to the agenda. Anybody want to add anything? I have one thing to add about the ball. Oh, yeah. Okay. Down here for one. Okay, hearing none others, we shall move on to number two. Approve the minutes of the August 13th Select Board meeting. And um, they were all sent out to you electronically, plus there's copies lying around. Anybody have any questions, additions, or deletions? I have one. Uh, kind of a question, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it's supposed to be. On page two, underneath nine, it says a side note to Mandy. The last rains acquired a lot of damage on the south end of Water Street. I'm not sure acquired is the right word, but I couldn't think of the right what the word was. Sustained? The rains wouldn't have sustained. Ca oh. Caused? Let's go with caused. Which one was acquired? Acquired? Is that something? I'm pretty sure that's what was said. I just heard it now. That. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> no. See, I knew what you meant. Should we leave it alone? Sure. I that's what. Care. If that's what was I left said. out some roads, but it's too late for that. Yeah. No. We're just trying to make sure that what we're doing is reflective of what actually happened. Okay. Any other questions? Deletions? Comments? Do we have a second? I mean, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second from Judy to approve the minutes as presented. Any, uh, any further discussion? All opposed say aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. I was not here. You were here. Did I say all opposed say aye? Yes. Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed <laughs> say nay. None opposed. They are uh, accepted as presented. Thank you, me. Um, we're going to approve the timesheets and the select board orders as is our usual at the end of the session. Now, we have uh, an ongoing issue that's been going on for a long time. The CODA and CODA sign request. Mm -hmm. And that got us talking about the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And the ordinance um, has been, oops, has um, been reviewed and judging, judging from the product, uh, has kept people awake a lot. Yes. Over the over the weeks. Um, so the question, I guess, I have two things. One of which is we should talk about this. Yes. <clears throat> but does the code and code assign request fit into the general um, formula about this ordinance? Is good. Um, I I don't I can't answer that question. I don't know. Oh. But but this ordinance, if we pass it, does not go into effect for sixty days after passage. Mm -hmm. So therefore, unless we're going to make code and code wait for 60 days, they could potentially, we would have to make another decision if we wanted to accept or sign a proposal based on the old ordinance. Okay. Or we could wait 60 days and then they'd have to meet this. Well, it, 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 it's kind of two different things. Yeah. yeah, it is two different things, right, exactly. Well, there's a discussion in here about us being able to um, uh, give them a waiver. Is that in here? That yeah, we can, yeah, so basically the appeal process is that um, th this board will elect a signed administrator that that person will administer the, the permits and such, making sure that they uh, fit everything, um, all the specifications within the um, ordinance. If it's, if, if it's rejected, if the sign is rejected, then the person can file an appeal with the select board being the governing body over what that appeal is, is looked at. So, um, and then we could as a group make a decision on a waiver, or we can say no, we don't want to do that because it doesn't fit uh, the ordinance. We're not making intentions, so it would fall to this point. Did, did anybody see anything in, in this that would preclude the code of code assignment? Well, uh, the only thing that I would think of is the lumens. Um, it's paragraph seven, uh, yeah, 124, illumination. Page. Page, uh, I don't know. Page. It is, it's section 124. Section 124? Yeah, oh, there is section 124. Yeah, yeah. One, one color are permitted. The le letters must be illuminated. LED signs should be limited solely to the word open. Mm -hmm. The area for the word open should be limited not to exceed. So, yeah, so technically under that 
stipulation. Split so down to their sign. You're looking at number four. Okay, mm -hmm. number four. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk about that for just one second since you hit that. Mm -hmm. This says LED lights in one color are permitted, and only the letters may be limited. LED signs shall be limited solely to the word "open." That's the only word we're going to allow them to do. What number? What about numbers? What about? Yeah, I, I guess we can. That's a good point. <clears throat> I mean, this the only thing we're asking you to do is to be able to put up the assignment, letting us know what the prices are or whatever. Right. Do, do you months. remember, Greg, what, <laughs> we, when we had that discussion? I'm trying to recall it now too. Yeah, I, um, too. I, I remember talking about that, but I don't. I think that was kind of that may have been inadvertent that it was only one word. Um, we discussed that at one point. We were discussing whether we would have separate restrictions for the village versus the right, which town. We didn't go down and there. we ended up not doing that. But this may be a, a leftover from that. Yeah, I mean, um, we can we can adjust that line. We can take that out. Well, I just think I mean, it, it does limit things quite a bit, and it limits it if you had yeah. a gas station that you couldn't mm -hmm. have your numbers there. So yeah, I mean, that would be significant. It also would, any of those, you know, what they want is, is, is the, the word sign, you know, that's yeah. out there. Hey, we pay special on oil, or right. know, here's the prices also of the gas pump. Um, I think our intent was not to limit them uh, because we thought that was kind of in keeping yeah. with them being able to do business. We were more concerned about how bright things are. We were concerned about Moving signs, we were concerned well, about. Moving, um, but again, the moving signs are illegal under the billboard act. Right. So that's that's illegal. Illegal. You can't have a scrolling. No, you just said legal. Oh, yeah, illegal. 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 You can't have a letter Scroll. scrolling. If you go down to Bradford because they used to all have yeah, that, when you go up, they don't anymore. If you drive up Putney Road, all those signs are static now, even like oh, right. the Auto Mall yeah. and, and yeah. one for Code and Code, they're just it's static. Okay, they right. don't move. And then they can shift. Switch them periodically, but they, they have, I guess, they can't be flashing and moving all around. It's not Ross and Bell Marketplace posts gas prices, so. Right. Nope. They do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All signs in town are grandfathered in. And okay. So uh, anything that was what was the day, all like, okay. or something. So we're not going around right. and telling businesses that they need to reapply and, and change their signs. So if you drive, all right. if most of the signs that would fall out of compliance with this are towards Stratton, basically from Ross and Bill. Towards the towards the town line bond bill, um, but again, we're not we're not making any of the businesses change what they have. So anything that's out there right now, as the time this goes into effect, will be grandfathered. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Well, <clears throat> I guess I'd like to spend some time going over this, but I'd also like to be able to tell Cody and Cody I'll give them some direction. I think they've been very patient for this. Well, I mean, and that's the, the, what Andy's saying. It's two different things. I mean, if we want to approve Cody and Cody's sign under the old ordinance. We can do that, and then we can talk about this and voting this one in. But again, yeah, even if we, even if tonight we voted this and approved it, it no. does not go into effect for 60 days if no resident gets a petition and gets five percent of the, the town. So if you challenge it, if that's the case, then we take it to the town meeting. Okay. So and we vote it can be stopped by actions of the, of the residents. That's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we have definition of actions of the resident? Is it like? You know, 15% of the population. They, I believe it's 5% five percent of the voter it's law. It's a formal appeal process okay. that exists for everything. Yeah, yeah they have like a petition. Like a petition, a petition yeah. with 5% of the voting voters of town, and then at that point, within 60 days, and within that point, we would, we would go in and have a special town meeting, or we could do this at town meeting, and then we discuss it, and then the town actually votes on it to pass okay. it enough. And Perfect. if they would turn it down, then we'd have to take it back to the drawing board. Okay. So, so then let's make it in two pieces. Do we, do we want to, does the, does the board want to go ahead and uh, act on the code of code sign request and then talk about this or talk about this first? Are we going through that page for page? Because I read that about three times. So. Yeah, there's a few things that have me concerned. I don't have to go page by page, but I, I, there are a couple things that I'm concerned about. For example, look at number three. It's right above what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this says signs except LED lights. As described in section 124A3, shall not be illuminated from within. A, if I'm reading this correctly, 124A3 reads signs except LED yeah. lights as described yeah. in the section. Yeah. So, so that's, that's true. Yeah, that's probably. 
Yeah, there is a ton of editing going on. Yeah, there, so there's, there's, there's some editing that needs to be done. Well, not only needs to be done, but what we were doing, moving oh, sure. parts around it. Of course, and of course. Things. This is definitely a draft. Yeah. So, I mean, I can, I can, I so we, we acknowledge there's probably some and, uh, stuff in there that's not. Okay. And I will make changes and give you a new copy. My last name is spelled wrong. There's no S <laughs> yes. on the end. Okay, I will, I will also fix that. Well, there's a couple of, I guess, fairly large things. One of which is the definition of, I mean, if we have a sign administrator, we don't have it. Correct. Well, we have to elect one. So as a reason, we have yeah. to elect or appoint. Right. That's Just like we point. appoint uh, the like a health, the health. Everybody in the board commissioner right? health put it in that scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we figured like on the police liaison, I mean, we just appoint that position. Mm -hmm. So we uh, that's is it in the bylaws um, of the town? I mean, you know, we do that at the original meeting. We'd have to add that in as a as, as a position that would be yeah, elected we, yearly. Would we have to go in here? Decision whether it's elected or whether it's appointed. I wasn't sure on that. I um, I was writing up a section about how that position was um, filled, and I yeah. and I stopped and said I'm not really certain how that what what that process is. I guess our general thinking is it should be appointed, yeah. and, mm -hmm. but the different. process to do that, and and also thinking that it should be somebody outside of the board, since we would act as the appeal process. Exactly, and that was my thinking. If one of us becomes right. uh, the administrator, then that person is absent. I mean, is going to recuse himself up. Well, should it recuse himself from any deliberations on appeal, which breaks us down to a four and four. Well, we're, that's where we were thinking it should be somebody big, possibly in the planning commission, possibly sure. another, you know. Somebody could volunteer. Outside the <clears throat> Okay, good. But that's one of the things. That's one of the questions that okay. I have with this thing. Um, you open. I mark that as well. I'll okay. look at that. And you guys want me? Do, do you want me to take that out? I, I think it's. I think. It, I think we should allow LED signs as long as it meets the other requirements. That I mean, I don't think it should be limited. Back to the back to the one about back to open one point. Correct. Correct. One point. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that that the, the yeah they should okay. be permitted. Um, and the letters can be eliminated. So we can scratch the light and sign shall be eliminated. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll take that out. I'll take yeah, that out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And our overall yeah. intent of this was to bring it to the modern world here. I mean, yeah, yeah. One, and, and then also not have to keep revisiting it every five years yeah. or whatever. Right. But this is, yeah. I mean, it's pretty comprehensive, but if we you know, wanted to include a lot of things, just to make sure we didn't have to keep coming back to it. Well, you guys clearly put a huge amount of time and energy. Yeah, you did. Um, but as we were talking before, every time I write something, I gotta read five or six times. I mm -hmm. find dumb mistakes in the sixth one. I can't believe I missed the first five times. Mm -hmm. Then as I go to the the town clerk and say, read it again, please. And she looks at it and says, How do you get past spelling like this? Okay. Um, so I haven't got a motion on the table. Um, mm -hmm. We did discuss the idea of code and code. code and code. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to move, there's a couple of quick things I just want to flag, yeah. just to help you, but I'd like to get code or code out of the way. Yeah. So, to, to, to you guys, now you guys worked on this, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I, I, we're not trying to get in the way of businesses, trying to, you know, yeah. advertise a business. Um, but it's at the same time protect the town. Right, yeah. definitely, and we had talked, again, we had talked in a previous meeting about, you know, the village, the village being trying to keep the character of the village, mm -hmm. whereas in East Jamaica, in that direction, there's not, you know, there's no village over there really at all. And, and if you look at the Coda Coda location, they want to have a backlit sign. To they've got lights on all the oil tanks too, right. so the lights are on all night long anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, this sign, if this is on, isn't going to affect no, much. And if it's not moving, my concern was if I'm a resident there and this thing's moving outside my window. I yeah. would be angry about that, but they can't, the sign can't move, so it's a static, you know, they can flash things out. I've driven through that driveway at night, Yeah. and the lights that are there, they're not bothersome, well, not to me, I don't live yeah. there, but yeah. even if it changed, you know, the message changed, it might be one person that sees it change, but it's not going to, it's pretty so Yeah. what they want to do. And as a resident, I would like to see those prices. I belong to the Key Club. I don't know who else does in this town. But you can't see what the prices are. Until you drive up to the pump. Pretty much. There's a little sign that's in the yeah, winter. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In the winter, you can't see them. That sign is covered up with snow. And it, yeah. it, 
Someone can have an accident looking at yeah. that. And they do periodically have specials that we might be interested in. Do yeah, I think some of them. Yeah, I mean, they have to sign down for a ride or line. You know, yeah. like, get your pre buy oil now. Yeah. Right. Your buy your people. Okay, so let's call that. Uh, do, we have a, do we have a motion? The motion to uh, discuss or to accept? To accept the code of code of sign request and approve their sign. Did, do we remember what they exactly what they wanted? We've got a picture. Well, I'll have, it's a um, 68 no motion, so I may want to have okay. discuss the okay. a permit for the sign. Okay, you're, you're making a motion? Yeah. Okay, so your motion is to give the code and code a permit for the sign as requested. It's a 13. No, that's not what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. just for the sign. And, and then, so I'm on the second and we, I can find out what what they want. Sure. Okay. Well, we could. We could. Can we? We could. We could. We could, we could, we could no, we could, we could put a motion to accept the sign, some of the seconds, and then we discuss. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so I'll, I'll put a motion to accept. He's got the motion. He's got the motion. I'll, I'll second the motion there. Right. Now we can discuss it. Okay. Now, now, at this point, the only thing they're, they're requesting is to add the, the, that lower addition. Right. They're not proposing changing any of the size of the sign or any of that. It's a 13 inch by 16 inch single line digital sign. Okay. Yeah. Which I think meets the criteria. Color red. Oh, it can only be one color. <laughs> so it could be red, it could be red. I believe the other ones I've seen. At their loca other locations are red. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the best you can best way yeah. to see it when it is. Part of their logo on too. their truck, so they can't go mm -hmm. red and black. Yeah. Do we want to make that part of the motion or do we just let them use their own judgment? Oh, we can tell them, you know, what we have in mind for colors or whatever when they apply for the permit. Mm -hmm. We could, and then ultimately in the future, when somebody else wants a sign, then we get in the business of convincing them their colors as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm talking about this one. No, but I'm thinking in terms of precedents, they get down the road. Yeah, but again, the precedents mm -hmm. could want to put the new ordinance in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be part, part of the right? Is there in the ordinance? Part of the application. Or whatever, right? uh, just that one line about it can be one color. Okay, so we're just saying it should be one, one color. color. That's basically what it's like. Okay. Okay. And white, passing the special elements or something. The number of elements that can put on. Any further discussion? How much is the permit? Or is there one? Five dollars, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Twenty-five. Well, I put twenty-five in there. I think we have to. Well, the old one was like five or ten. It's, it's, it's not much. It was not much relative to from nineteen fifty-six, so it's probably three dollars. Six hundred. Well, it should be a couple of bucks. Yeah, there should be more than a weight permit. Well, if we're going to go ahead and give him the uh, the permission they predicated on the previous site ordinance. I'm going to have to look it up at the previous site of events, and that's the fee case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had it up. Right. Okay, we can do that. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? I think it covered that part. I think we're good. This passes. You're good. All right. So I will call over tomorrow. And meanwhile, we need to read this even more yes. closely and do whatever we need to do. Well, do you want to bring up your points then, Paul? Yes. And I can mark them in here and I can, what I will do is, I will read this again and <laughs> set it up. Yeah, that's the problem. So okay. <laughs> yeah, let I me mean, just, I'll, this should be able to go pretty quickly. We don't have to fix it. We'll just, no, I'll just, I'll just mark what you what you Sure. I made it the sign about the sign administrator. We know that because you have to be one of those. Okay. The fee for the sign is 25. You just pull that I out. I made that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there, there was in in the policy, in, in the ordinance that we based this off, there was no specific uh, dollar amount. So I just said $25 seems to be that sounds reasonable. That's okay to me. Yeah. Yeah, not over, over, overbearing. I also made an adjustment to some of the fines. One of the fines was. Eight hundred dollars a day, or something. Right. each day you're out of compliance, and I reduced that to fifty dollars a day. Oh, okay. Just so you know, it, it's not yeah. fair. I mean, yeah, at eight hundred dollars a day, it was crazy. Well, those are the Also, the the fee for um, for our appeal was twenty five dollars as well. Mm -hmm. Versus okay. fifty, it was originally was fifty. I reduced it to twenty five. Okay. Um, I'm on the next page, section uh, uh, 115, general requirements. <clears throat> um, 
C2, um, that was fixed. The town sign plaza. Look at the definition of the town sign plaza. A town sign plaza would be something like in Rossonville. Or what do you mean? Well, I'm looking on the town sign plaza. Town sign plaza, we have one. Yeah. The directional sign, which is... Yeah, I don't think that we have that. I don't think we have one. It would be more like if in the little green here, the town put in a sign that said state park, town office. Oh, yeah, um, and, we, the, and we do do that. The town hall. I mean, the, it would be. There's a plaza being multiple organizations, and this would direct in that direction. Right, or yeah. let's say we had a, all the business owners in town could be part of a sign that was right in the. Uh -huh. I have it. I don't. I couldn't come up with it, at least in my head, thinking about this man. Yeah, it would have to be, like you say, when you come into Jamaica, one. when you come into Jamaica to the assignments, it's exactly three mountains here, and Dean Case is up there, and, and the beer stores in Rossville, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of stuff. So, and so yeah. I was taking this side, but we used a couple of different towns and used their templates and said, oh yeah, there may be a day when I was wondering like that exists. What sources you were okay. using that makes well, sense? Well, we can have something like that. I know there are places where you've got a little, a little, a little uh, strip mall, and there's a sign, and it's got lots of different... Yeah, that would well, be different. That's the that was what I meant. <laughs> yeah. No so one directed you to the town office and some other mm. buildings like that. Actually, the reason I noticed it was a picture in the reformer, and there was a bear standing in front of it <laughs> over the middle of the day. <laughs> they I, read all the, I read everything on the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's, again, that's for future. Okay. Yeah, now I'll be clear about when you had assigned administrator anyway, but I didn't, wasn't sure what I thought. Um, the next thing I had in Mark and Red is um, on Section 122, Special and Community Events A2. It says special event banners, which are to be hung across the town highway or right of way, should be attached to purely law. That's illegal now. I think, you yeah, don't have elsewhere in here saying anything across the highway is illegal? Yeah. Right. So that's it. That's, I can strike that. Yeah, yeah let's take that part out. I, I, what I'll do is I'll change that to say special event banners. I, I, I'll see if I can locate the other area, but basically, if, if there's nowhere else that says that, I'll say you can't hang the banner over. To I was pretty sure I read it or whatever, 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 whatever state law sure. that is. And maybe we can hang it from you know pole to pole or tree to tree, but just not across. You the can. Way. You know, Dean Case did. Where they, they, mm -hmm. Karen hung the banner for Old Home Day. Yeah, you know, yeah I think the, that's the how she tree and ladder. Yeah, yeah, I know they've done that down. Heritage Festival and uh, yeah. and New, New Fame, they hung it on the side this year. Yeah, so yeah, that I did too. So that's that's okay. So no catch. Um, the next page on 23 C, it says um, the a bunch of uh, sign administrator may may have temporary off premises directional signs or promotions by a commercial business or home occupation. All the following conditions apply: signs shall have no more than two regional services. So not exceed six square feet per surface. So we, anyway, there's a list of things which sound reasonable, but I'm wondering about garage sale signs. Those are pretty oftentimes pretty. Yeah, I believe they're in the. Uh, those would be under the uh, exclusions. That is under the yeah. exclusions. Yeah. So there's a number of signs which do not require. It. As long as they're only there for a certain length of time. I know there's a time for them. Okay. Indefinite. Table of signs. It's, it's in their tax sale for us, a garage sale. Yeah. You can have it up for three consecutive days, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Okay. You it's number eight. Four square feet, so two by two. Um, I'm being a prohibitive just some technical things that we'll bark for you with right now. Um, the conditional sign permit, which is in B, it says the following signs shall require a conditional sign permit. The exterior walls of the business, such that the sign is visible from the traveled roadway or right of way. Now, if the sign is placed on the business, as in mailed to it or, or painted on it, then it says a site visit may be necessary to determine if a roof sign is the only option the business has regarding the display of the sign. I suspect that's it, there's a shrubbery or something in front of the building. Yeah, so. Yeah, I guess so, conditional. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, that's, that's written to, you know, keep the character so people just aren't tacking signs up on the sides of their house and that kind of stuff, or advertising. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was, I mean, we are only, again, reading into what was presented and said, oh, yeah, that makes sense, but I'm going to say that the intent of that was just so that somebody couldn't circumvent the rest of the sign ordinance 
by putting them on the wall, paint, paint them on their wall, and all of a sudden yeah. there's 30 signs all wrapped around their house. Okay. Um, okay. Um, a couple of different pieces we can talk about. Did you just shoot that? Did you shoot me in the gym? Yeah. Oh. Um, Waiver of peace by the site administrator, sign of virus, and display those in this one. Um, and then for sales sign, the total fees, not more than $100, this has to do with the administrator waiving the fees if the fee is not more than $100. Anything more than $100 has to come to the select board, is that my understanding? Yes. Yeah, here's your dry soil sign. You can say the days can't be more than four square feet, and you can only have six. Good number. Mm -hmm. Indoor window signs. I'm under section 139. Indoor window signs. Number and size is limited to the size of the window. You're thinking in terms of, of like hanging stuff on the window or, or hanging stuff. I'm not going to sign it bigger than the window. I guess. Like, you know, <laughs> you multiple frames. Right? <laughs> well, so it could be multiple panels. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm I'm not sure if that's clear enough. Well, I think at one point, wasn't there some discussion about some of the window signs at D and K's? Well, I don't remember. I know one of the signs is indoors, but it's an open sign and it's covered. That, that there were some signs. Just a lot. I, that, I wasn't sure what to yeah, make sure. of that. Okay, well, yeah. Sure. Um, I have to tell you, I was impressed throughout this about how much work we guys have done. Yeah, fine. And guys, I want to do a shout out to Lisa Mann from yes. the Planning Commission who also helped us considerably about uh, working on this. Thank you, Lisa. Every time. Mm -hmm. um, on the last page, there's a sentence that says, Offenses shall be counted on a calendar year basis. Are we talking about accumulate to 12 months and then start over? If the offense continues beyond the calendar year, you see, then the bill would be whatever they're. You'd have to pay that. And then we spend it. You would collect it. Yeah, so if they're up at $5,000, okay, that five thousand we'll go for that, and then you start a new bill for them, I guess. That's 100, 200, whatever. It's supposed to be. Okay. Just one I have to look at these fines, too. I need to make some job. I'm going to adjust some of these simple penalties because it is $800 or so in there. So yeah. I have to, under the specifics, of the what, one, section 170, section D, I'll, I'll adjust those numbers down. Sure. I think that the. You know, the truth of the matter is we're, we're, um, we're amateurs to do the best we can. You know? And I think you guys did a superb job, excellent job. So, then, um, then we can suggest that as a draft, we've reviewed this as a team. Okay. And you had a chance, I'll, I'll give you my copy of this. That's fine. Marks. I've also marked it here. I will, what I will do is, for our next meeting, I will make the changes in here. If anyone has anything else, you're at home, you're reading it, you say, well, it's just not right, send me an email, and I will uh, take, it, uh, take it into consideration. And then I will come back and get this out to you guys by uh, two weeks Thursday, same as, same as this time when, when, the, uh, when, the, uh, the minutes, when the agenda goes out. Sure. I'm trying to get, get it out that same day so people can read it over the weekend. Okay, and, and now the, the time pressure we had was code to do something. Now we can do this. Yeah. And take our time to do it. Right. Those little pieces that I've been bringing, little lines on the sides for punctuation and spelling and crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't even want to know. All right, then. What up? You don't even want to know what the I mean, formatting <laughs> was. I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. I did. Uh, it was a PDF that I converted to a Word document, and it was just a lot of manual spaces. Right. Everything I write goes to Sarah. It goes to the Word document. Thank you very much. Um, any other? Yeah, gold medal. Yes. <laughs> um, or I will get submitted to me when I actually don't have time to read it. It was really fast. Okay, number six, the chair factory update. Do we have an update, sir, on the chair factory? We do. Um, not necessarily good news, I'm not sound enthusiastic, but I've um, been kind of struggling with trying to get quotes for the chair factory. Um, we've had some verbal quotes, which I want to have in writing, but I don't quite know why. I mean, everybody's busy, um, and maybe that's just their way of saying that they can't get to it. Um, we have had one quote 
official. Um, it more or less, um, I guess, without getting into all the nitty I mean, it, the the building's only valued at forty five thousand dollars. We've got a quote of thirty thousand dollars to redo the roofs. Um, so it's made me and I guess maybe a few other people that I've kind of chatted with just reassess where we're going with this. Do we want to have the Cadillac gold, gold trim on the roof and we've got a, a building that's really not even worth that and what's the future of the building? I think I'd like to be, bring it up. I mean, I've been chatting with a number of people in town about, you know, what is this building? Obviously, it's got some historical significance. We don't want to just have it go away, but we also don't want to have it just crumble into the ground because we can't get a proper roof on it. Um, so I guess that's 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 kind of the update. I mean, just kind of throwing it out there as a challenge. I think we're trying to look for some creative solutions. Um, the town's got a number of assets, buildings, and whatnot that are probably deemed more valuable and literally more valuable. And you know, where do we put our money and that kind of thing? Um, so it's it's a it's a challenge. I mean, I, like I said, I don't think people want it just to fall into the ground, and people don't want to just say, hey. <laughs> so that that's that's the update, I guess. Um, there, I mean, it is covered by insurance. I mean, there is some insurance money potential far from it, but whether we take that money and put it into a building that's not really going to be of value or used in the future is the question, also. That brings something up for me <clears throat> that I would like us to kind of run around in our heads. And that is, uh, we have actually six buildings that belong to the town. <clears throat> and I think that we need to start thinking about priorities in terms of the maintenance of these buildings rather than doing it kind of, well, this one looks like it's really running down, but really try to begin to uh, make a list of kind of what we're doing with the town hall is exactly what really needs it first and to begin to do that with with the town buildings and and uh, I, I would really would like to push for that and have some kind of an administrator like we're doing with the uh, the new rules here around signage and and to have someone that is really separate from all of the connections of the town and to really make decisions about what needs to be done with any of these buildings and not just do it because someone's speaking louder than another person in terms of getting things done. I, I kind of like that, except I would have the decision phrase out of there and have them make recommendations right. to us to make the decision. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That would be it. And I that would be the administrator's job to go and inspect these buildings. To provide for the inspection. Yeah. I think that that should be a totally different agenda item than the chair factory update. I think this would be lumped into that. Mm -hmm. But right now, I mean, we're talking about what to do with that building or do anything. And I can recall when I first became health officer that a contractor offered to take that building down for the materials and clean it up. And it was tossed around, but it didn't ever happen. That's the closest I've ever heard of anything happening with that. Mm -hmm. it's, not on, it's not just on a historic register. And, you know, he just told us it's going to be X amount. He's got one estimate for a thirty thousand dollar roof. Mm -hmm. but, but I think the other thing is is another hole. Uh, that's not bad. Big, uh, bigger. Yeah, third, I, third, I, I, I'm, I'm fine third, with that. But I, I just want us to begin to think about that. We have been talking about that, but I think we need more serious to make that <laughs> uh, an item itself okay. sometime. How about next time? Okay. In September or something. It would be the tenth, yes. The tenth? Yeah.
I think before the meeting, I would propose that a few of us and maybe a person or two from the Planning Commission, it doesn't have to be a formal committee or anything, but come up with an outline of this so it's not, so we've got a little bit of something, a little bit of bones to kind of mm -hmm. put something on at the next meeting as opposed to starting from scratch at the meeting for a discussion. And I mean, I, I mean I don't, I'll throw this up to Judy. I mean, uh, Is it the two of us to jump in on this, at least list the buildings, maybe set up a, a you know, Right. What's mm -hmm. at least at the top of our head some ideas right. that might right. need to be worked on and, and, and yeah. just kind of set some a small little scope to it. Uh, you think there's someone in the planning commission who want to jump in on this? Be part of the part of the. I would imagine there might be a member or two on there. I mean, we can always ask them. It doesn't have to again be formal, but we sure. can just right. looking for more brain power, basically. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, the question I would then ask is, given the fact that there's some historical. Uh, flavors to many of our buildings. I'm wondering if someone from the historical. Well, I was going to. I was going to ask. You mentioned that there's been a significant amount of email conversations going on regarding the building, and uh, we do have uh, a neighbor who is very interested in it and willing to, willing to uh, sort of spearhead any any process that goes on. There were there was potentially some grants out there. Uh, you know, for historic buildings, we've got a couple of people who might be interested in, in exploring grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I was going to suggest regarding uh, this particular building is that maybe we set up a, a time when the select board will talk about it, and members of the historic foundation can come in and uh, mm -hmm. be part of that conversation. I think it'd be a good idea to have all as many players as possible. Yes. There's a lot. Some of these are vexing problems. Right. And, and there's a limited amount of money, right. um, and uh, I think that would be very helpful. I mean, we, we understand clearly that members of the historical society have an interest in um, preserving the flavor of the town, and I think we're all on board with that. And I think it'd be helpful to have at least one uh, of your members involved. Yeah, I think there'd be a lot of people that would probably come. Sure. Because there is yeah. a lot of interest. Of course, you know, we're, you're talking about volunteers and how much time can they commit to anything, sure. but. Uh, there's certainly a lot of interest. Sure, sure, sure. Well, and the truth of the matter is we're all volunteers, so we're, there's time pressure for everybody. But, but you guys have, um, over time, explored other buildings and other historical situations. So you've got a, a jump start on that anyway. And there might be some contacts that we can go to, sure. to other historical foundations that have bought buildings. So it's a good idea to have that kind of, yeah. you know, we have no problem as we've all talked about plagiarizing and this experience. So yeah, that would be good. All right, so I can put this on for the, the for the tenth okay. of okay. September. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say it's two agenda items, and not to complicate it all, but that there's one that's again, like Andy was saying, very specific to this building. Have the historical foundation maybe present some ideas, or maybe I don't know if it gets that far. But then even a smaller subset of that to, to start the discussion of a of a bigger town wide maintenance type thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I think we need to be mindful of, of, of the buildings that are belong to the town and not just let them run down. But, right. and this but one, then the just chair, not put all our money in one right. basket. And, and the, his, the chair factory has a little bit more urgency to it. I mean, it's already mm -hmm. been going on a few months. So. Yeah, and if anybody doubts um, the, the urgency of it, they should drive on Pikes Falls Road and look at what the building looks like from that angle. I did that for about a minute. Yeah, it's frightening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. It's, it's got to be done something. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so we'll put that on the agenda for the uh, night and have a uh, chair factory update and whatever we've been able to accumulate for ideas from the public and um, discuss the facility manager or team, if, if that seems like the, the smarter move, um, for the town and we'll include the historical society. Oh, and the planning commission. Super. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any other questions or additions to this, this item? All right. Um, uh, on number seven, listeners, there's an errors and omission thing. This is uh, something that uh, we do as part of the uh, process of evaluating properties 
Um, in general, you all know about the grievance process. If a, if a homeowner has a grievance, they first discuss it with the listers. If the listers don't buy into it, then they have the right to formally grieve to the listers. And then if the listers then uh, don't satisfy them, it goes to the BCA. The, the, the first step generally is uh, they come to the listers with, with their issues and and uh, sometimes we say, oh yeah, that, that is definitely a problem, uh, and we uh, elect to fix it. And the, the first two items on here fall into that category. These were uh, people we talked to earlier in the year, but it got sort of uh, missed during the uh, reappraisal process. So we come to you with what we call errors. These are not, these are not people who have come to us after the fact and grieved their, their assessments. These are errors that the listers made in the course of their operations. So the first one is a property that um, uh, on the deed and in a, in a uh, survey shows the property to be 7.21 acres. However, uh, that two acres was actually uh, parceling into two parcels as part of what are called um, uh, lease lots. Back in the old days, uh, churches or universities or uh, entities would collect leases on certain properties. It was usually granted by the governor or something like that. Anyways, that all went by the wayside uh, many, many years ago. But um, some of these parcels are still identified on our maps. What happened way back, probably 12 or 15 years ago, is when this property was assigned its acreage, they took the 7.21 acres and they added to it the 4.1 uh, acres or 21 acres, uh, as which was part of the lease lot. It should not have been added to it. It should have been considered part of the 7.21. So they've actually been paying uh, taxes on, uh, on uh, more land than they actually owned. So, um, they asked us to reduce the uh, acreage from 8.62 acres to 7.21, and we agreed to do that, but it didn't, it didn't happen during the reappraisal. So we're asking the listers as part of the Arizona emissions process to, to approve that change. Do you, have, do you need us to act individually or? Um, I, think, I think individually makes more sense because you may decline one, you may, you may, okay. you may accept the others or something like that. Um, sounds, we have a motion? That sounds reasonable. I move that uh, the change be made on parcel 003.3, yes? Second. Uh, and 00LL 3.3. doing that? LL means lease lot. Oh, right. okay. Uh, that the 1.41 acres is actually uh, included in the 7.21 acres, and that correction be made by the listers. Did I do that right? Yep, that's fine. Okay. I'll sign <laughs> um, Another heading of discussion. Do we need to list the entire process or merely agree with the listers? Up to you. I think what you want to do is to follow that last statement. <clears throat> listers request permission to change uh, the uh, acreage of Judy's motion authorize the listeners to make that change. Okay. Good. Okay. We need to um, act on your first motion. Okay. All in favor of promotion. Oh, there's another question. Hmm? How long were they charged for? It's probably about 12 years. And that's just I mean, it's not a whole lot of money. It's an acre and what, acre plus. Yeah. And the difference in taxes, or the difference in acreage value this year is about $1,500. And we, we think we, we spend, uh, uh, three dollars per hundred of, of assessment, three and a half or whatever it is. So it m amounts to maybe forty-five dollars on their tax bill or something like that. A year? A year, yeah. For 14, 15 years? Something like that. I mean, you know, obviously the price of land has changed over time. But, uh, but I mean, it's not a huge amount of money, but it, you know. And they can't recoup it. They can't come back to us. And, no, nothing's ever retro. No. A retro rebate. But right. for the future, we never happens. No. <laughs> okay, so the original um, uh, extensive motion is on the table. We have a second uh, for the discussion. 
All in favor of her first motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Um, hearing so many ayes, we're going to go ahead with the first motion. And um, that's the motion that passes. Even though I think you decided that you wanted to change it. Yeah, well, it went through. Let everybody go there. We'll have to get the. It was good. Did you get a good grace with it? Okay. All right, so. Um, that went through. We're in number two then. Okay, this is a, a, a problem. The way the law reads is um, if two parcels are owned by the same entity uh, that are contiguous, they're to be treated as a single parcel. And what happened is, uh, in this case, is on one parcel, the listers showed it as being owned by husband and wife. On the other parcel, the next door, it was only shown to be owned by the husband. So therefore, what happened is the listers treated it as two separate parcels. Well, uh, these people went and asked us to do a little checking. We went in and did some deep research and we found out that both parcels are actually owned by husband and wife. So therefore, they are eligible to be considered contiguous. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've asked us to make that change. Mm -hmm. The change you'd like to see is listed under the list. It's back, it's on the second page of that. Right, the list is request permission to close parcel 00K15, 1.5.1 and to add that acreage to the other parcel so it's considered to be contiguous. Do we have to repeat that or can we just use what you just said? Well, I think if we use what you just said, it's better yeah. to go through the whole thing. We just read it. Right, right. no, I'm yeah. got it. Yep. Is that an error? Just back. Well, we'll look at the white so one property. Yeah. 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 Okay, we've got a motion on this. I'll make a motion that the listeners no, no. request for permission to close parcel 00K-15.1.5.1 and to change the acreage for parcel 00K-15.1.5.1 from 6.2 acres to 14.9 acres, making a revised value of 540,100. Second. We've got a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, Joe brought the point just so you know. That second parcel is land only. There is no building on the second parcel. Mm -hmm. So the, the net effect of that is really just a clerical. Does that change the value of the property? Yes. Because of that? They were uh, appraised at 585,005 okay. before. So they'll be getting a $45,000 differential. And that's because it's just open land and it's, it's diminishing not. value. It doesn't have a site. Right. It doesn't have to pay the site, but the higher okay. site is done. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Number three, sir. The third one is a rather interesting one. Right. Uh, if you know, you're all aware that there is a hydro project as part of the Ball Mountain Dam, and that just opened up, I think, last year. The listers had no clue on how to value that property. Uh, of course, any MCs that are their professionals, they do know how to value those kind of properties. But in order to do that, they need income information. They need to know what equipment is in there. It's not a uh, it's not a, a building appraisal, it's a, it's a business appraisal. They've been requesting this information for months. These people have not responded to their request. So the, the suggestion was is that we, we use an arbitrary number to appraise this property and uh, let them come back and grieve it if they're unhappy with it. And when they grieve it, they'll have to give us the information that we've been requesting. Uh, he's looked at some hydro plants around the, around the state at about the same capacity and determined that they're in the $1.5 million range. So his recommendation to us as the listers was that we appraise it at $1.5 million and uh, we'll send them out a change of appraisal notice and give them the opportunity to, uh, to grieve it. Okay, can I ask a question? <clears throat> You said that you all thought about using an arbitrary number. Ultimately, you took 1.5 million as appraised value of similar projects. That's not exactly arbitrary. No, but it's not based on, on facts. It's not based, based on, on facts. On the in, right, but it's not, it's not based on the income of that particular uh, gotcha. project. Because no, it's based on facts. The Basically, facts it's based on the amount of uh, kilowatt hours that are produced. However, there's no facts, not arbitrary. Right. right. It's, not, it's not that kind of arbitrary. That's right. It's based on other plants that are similar capacities. Okay. So they'd have to pay this bill this coming October? Well, they would, they would have the opportunity to grieve. So uh, if they grieved it, then they would, that would be uh, 
uh, held off until the grievance was heard. And then they, if the grievance wasn't heard or they weren't satisfied, they'd be able to go to the PCA. And then if they aren't satisfied with that, they go to uh, the state. So uh, I don't know at what point whether they have to pay that or not. Well, that's the other question. Is this a federal project? No. It's a private, it's a com private commercial. If it was a federal project, it would be exempt from tax. Exactly. That's what I'm wondering. So, yeah. Is it a federal dam or a commercial dam? It's a federal yeah. dam. They've got a lease with the, uh, with the electric, with this hydro plant. Okay. So the question is, it's a, it's a commercial project on a federal project. On a federal, a federal project. project. Sounds like lawyers. <laughs> it probably will go there, but we do. We have to do something. Yeah, we do. Right now they're appraised at what two hundred and something thousand. Yeah, you have to start the process. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with that. Plan. Do you have a motion? I move that the listers request permission to change the value of parcel zero zero n dash l three point one from one hundred sixty two thousand three hundred dollars to. One million five hundred dollars. The motion have a second. One million five hundred thousand dollars. One million five hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. I'll yes. second that. I'm going to second. <laughs> that was a good correction. Good second. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Four hundred fifty thousand. Right. <laughs> any uh, any further discussions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Okay, that motion passes as well. <laughs> okay, right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, we got a letter from the VLCT. Yeah, we, this is which is the um, uh, Vermont uh, <laughs> League of Cities and Towns. Uh, I got this letter on the 7th of August. They are having um, the annual What's it called? Yeah, the business meeting will be done with the procedures in August. I uh, don't have the date of August 7th, but it's going to be in the Hilton on October 3rd. They are asking us to provide, I'll show you, to ensure that all BLCT member cities and towns are properly represented and able to participate in the adoption of the 2019 BLCT municipal policy, parenthesis, our legislative platform, and the election of league officers. We are asking you as your municipality's legislative body to designate one, emphasis one, official from your town as a voting delegate for the meeting. This designation will ensure that each town is heard and uses the vote to which it is entitled. Um, there's more information on here, but the, the, um, what's on the table right now is, do we have someone who is going or was interested in going to the Double Tree Inn on October the 3rd, starting at approximately 12.30 p.m., to be a voting representative from Jamaica. How much more does it involve other than this one meeting? <laughs> well, the county fair itself goes to... Well, it's a two-day thing, I think, right? The county yes. fair, but is that an ongoing year-long go to all their board meetings type of thing? No, I did that's that. a different thing. Yeah, oh, okay. I did that last year. It's just their one meeting. It's, it's just that one it's meeting. It's within the event of the town fair. Oh. Yeah. Um, then you answer by the September 21st. Um, and basically, the delegate designation form we um, select board block to designate the following individual and represent the city town as voting member of the BLCT membership. And um, you can do, you can go to the whole thing, or you can only attend the annual meeting. I mean, there's a couple of choices here. But they're asking for us to send a rep. What day is it again? On the 3rd of October. But is that a what day? Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Approximately 12.30 p.m. Um, no, okay. <laughs> they'd like to tell us, uh, inform them of the designate, designation by Friday the 21st. While a currently serving local official may speak at the annual meeting, only designated city or town delegates may vote. I would like to become more, I, I don't know for sure that I'd be able to attend. I, I'm familiar with the event, but... Um, it's a very interesting event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I had, I a lot of thought I would like to go, but I, had, I don't know my schedule right now. If we got to the 21st, can we mm -hmm. wait till sure. the time to... Yeah, we've got a little, well, they want to go to the 21st. We can put this on the table until... The time. The 10th. Does that sound fair? Is that a good enough time? That sounds... Okay. 
Like it's not like a good plan. And I have all the numbers you need in every option one. If you want to look it over before I make a decision. Okay, take a look at the tent. Okay, now, there's another little piece of business. <clears throat> As some of you may or may not remember, we have a, um, it's officially called the Fiscal Year 19 Municipal Resolution for Municipal Planning Grant. This is the money, the grant money, to pay for the municipal planning that's been going on. And um, we've done it in the past, and we're ready to do it again this year to get more money to help the Planning Commission do the planning. Um, there is a, a process here that um, basically the municipality of Jamaica is applying for funding as provided in the budget. Uh, it, it, therefore, result that the Municipal Planning Commission recommends applying for said grant. Now, understand that Rebecca Ohm is um, the Planning Commission chair, and so she is um, the, the Municipal Planning Commission rep. Yeah. Okay, but there needs to be a second one, and that name is either the chief executive officer as defined by law, or is a select member of the town manager, city manager, and town administrator. So last time we did this was when Beta was here, and I was the um, named as um, all, the authorizing name. official for redundancy to, to, to back that up. Having said that, we need to have one more as an alternate authorizing official for redundancy. Last time it was with Russo, but he's no longer the select board. So we need another um, select board member um, who is interested in, and for all practical purposes, putting his name on a piece of paper, because generally Rebecca handles pretty much all of the stuff as they did. I was available to handle some of the computer work, just basically I took their word for it. You know, it's a, it's a planning grant process that, that's like all other grant processes. You've got to throw through a bunch of hoops. But we need an alternate official in case I find a better offer and move away. I'll do it. Want to do that, Tom? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. So, the way that works is we vote on Tom, and then we all... There's a block for rural towns or consortiums. The Regional Planning Commission will serve. We're not going to do the reasonable decision. I think all we need to act is... Put your name in and pass it this day. On the back side of it, there's some instructions for resolution. But I think they're talking about um, the regional commission for, uh, we handled it if we didn't have any. But we are the legislative body, so we ended up putting our names and the signatures on the back of the page, basically sending, making the authorities official. Does that work for everybody? Now, I need to have a motion to that effect. The motion is going to be that Tom um, Tolbert be named as the Alternate authorizing official for the resolution for a municipal planning grant. Did you just make that motion? Or are you just. Sounds like you that? just did. Yep, I second it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Thank you, thank you. You're giving me straight. So, Any further discussion? Is, that, is it clear what's going on here? Yeah. It's just. Yeah, I think it works out. Yeah. And we need to all sign it before we do it tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you, Tom. Passes. You abstain. We'll wait for you. Um, okay, we'll we'll get you on here. We'll get all the signed, and that will be uh, forwarded to the appropriate municipal grading people. Okay. Now, next item is we have time for public concerns. Any public concerns? Very good. We'll move on to number eleven. We have two personnel issues. You got the golf here, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm out. Oh, golf. Yeah. Why is it good thing you sit next to me when you keep track of this? I keep track of this. I'm going to put it right here. Well, you're sort of. All right. So, um, just real quick, I got an email. I don't know. I think we all got an email from Maureen Davy, from Davi, from uh, Corps of Engineers regarding the, the ball field, which is a floodplain. Um, there's a number of questions they were asking about uses of fertilizer and concessions and such. I sent an email back to her as. I was head of the rec committee for a long time. I knew what was going on. So, and she got back with me and said that she would be um, re giving us a new permit for that. I think the permits last two or three years. The last one was, no, maybe it's five years because the last one was 13. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
we should hopefully, she was, she said, um, I got your answer, answers to the questions and I'll send it to her in a little bit. I never saw it, so I don't know if she got you know, tied down on something. But uh, hopefully I'll see that in a couple of days and I believe you have to sign that Paul. Okay. As, uh, as, as, as this okay, you can do that? Yeah. Sure, sure. sure. So, okay, excellent. Yeah, she said that something about it, something was unlocked. She did say one of the um, one of the uh, sheds was unlocked. They were also concerned about fertilizers. You know, we don't for the public. We don't use any fertilizers down on the field or pesticides or anything like that. Um, and they asked some questions about lime. You just use the lime for uh, making the lines. But really, we use paint now. They don't. They use the, the striping paint versus actual lime because it lasts longer. Um, and some other things like what do we sell? The concessions and yeah. I don't relevance that has, but <laughs> nonetheless, good will. I tell it good will. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else want to remind me that I forgot something before we move on to number 11? All right, we have two personnel issues for which we do executive sessions. Um, <laughs> getting ready to write. So, where's my little note here? I think we fixed this. Did you put a new name? I didn't write, I didn't write no. Okay, here's a new one. Next um, I move to find the premature general public knowledge of a personnel issue. We clearly place the individual involved at a substantial disadvantage because the select board needs to discuss private matters. How did I write the last one? Well, I said that one day to revoke it, so they said the English. In any case, that gets the job done. I move that we enter into executive session to discuss yes. what you want to read. We got to move the first book. Is this the new one I wrote? Yeah, oh, I haven't okay. retyped it. The individual involved is a sense of disadvantage. Risk violating the individual's privacy if it discusses this matter in public. That's what's right. Um, I made the motion. Do I have a second? One second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we will move to I now move that we enter into executive session to discuss this personnel issue under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1A of the Vermont Statutes. I'll second. I'll I'll second. Any further? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed because I don't know what it is. Which one? As usual. Either one. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that when we went these executive sessions, I have no idea what they are, so sometimes I don't feel like doing it. Okay. Do so I, I just don't know. I'm just voting against it. Okay. So I have one for and one against it. <laughs> and you were voting against or for? No, no, no. I was just commenting that that was a fair statement. Okay. You have no idea what you're yeah, doing. It's so tricky I about mean, it. I, I, how we phrase this I know. can give away the substance of yeah. the session. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to balance people's privacy versus. Oh, I understand. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Um, I have, well, I have two yeas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have four. Yeah. Three yeses, uh, one no. Okay, the motion passed. The next motion is that we move into the executive session to discuss. Is that the one you opposed? Because I've read both of them. We passed the first one unanimously. Yeah. Okay, so now we're passing the second one. That's the one you're opposed to. Right. Okay, so that, that's three and one for the second one. I didn't say anything on the first one. I just didn't say anything oh, on the first one. <laughs> that's really right. We're in executive session. Right. Yeah, well, we're going to uh, give, uh, it's, we'll call it executive session at 8.04. Uh, I don't believe it's necessary for the council to hang around. Well, we would have a decision on it. What's that? I'm going to guess we will have a decision on the coming We might. Hang on. Just, just, we'll make it, we'll, we'll take you into consideration. Um, but I don't think you need to stay if you don't want to. We can take our own notes. We do this, somebody do the second. Say again. Will someone fill this out for the second one? Yeah.
explore if I have to write notes. To your point, Andy. To the Regional Commission. As our representative. As one of our representatives. Okay. Commissioner. As one of our commissioners. Commission as Jamaica's representative. Okay? Can I write that in there as Jamaica's mm -hmm. representative? Do you okay that? Mm -hmm. Isn't this just riveting TV? <laughs> um, I've got a first, I have a second. I'm oh, sorry, first was Greg, second was uh, Tom. All right, I have first and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of appointing Andy to an original commission, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, Mr. Coyne, thank you for your service. I would also like to make the motion to appoint Joel Blooming as our second second commissioner as the Jamaica representative. Hang on a second. To the regional, with the regional commission. I have to appoint Joel Blooming as second rep to Wyndham Regional Commission. Mm -hmm. Is that okay, everybody? Yep, I'll second that. And Tom is second. Okay, we've got a uh, first motion, we've got a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I have three ayes. Any opposed? I'm just going to abstain. You're going to abstain? Yeah. All right, so I've got, uh, they've got three ayes, so it carries. And there you go. Okay. Um, all right. There's a meeting tomorrow. What time, where? I don't know. I absolutely, I can't come as it turns out. I have no margin to Oh. Yeah, not, nothing with service. Oh, okay. But it, it's tomorrow night, I can let you know when it is. Can you get it to him? I can get it to him. In fact, I could probably. I think it's on, I can find it if you don't have it. I appreciate it you did send it to me. I think I have it. Um, it's, it don't give you much time to get ready. <laughs> You can, uh, if you want to talk to me sometime tomorrow about it, I can, if you have time during the day. I'll try to. Yeah. Or, or now. Is, is, is there an agenda out, or instead of course? Is, that, is there an agenda? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. There, there was be an agenda. Yeah. Or you can get old Chris, he can give right. I think I have emails from him. I have him on email. Chris Campany will, will speak. Okay, so next order of business is we have another um, executive session we need to go into. So, you do not have to hang around for this one. Ooh. <laughs> and the second one, did you have, did she give you the, the blank for that? I got the blank, but not the one that you do. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well let me, let me uh, read it and then I'll... I'll get the first one and fill it out properly. <clears throat> um, I'm going to move to find that premature general public knowledge of this personnel matter would clearly place the individual involved at a substantial disadvantage because it risks violating the individual's privacy if, it discuss, if we discuss this matter in public. Um, that's my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. To a second by Tom.
Then uh, I move that we enter the executive session to discuss this personnel issue under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1A of the Vermont Statutes. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Judy. So we are going to um, adjourn for a few minutes. What vote? Mm -hmm. Not the wrong vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Did I, did I vote for the first one? No, you didn't vote for the first one. All in favor of uh, moving that agreement should jump on with knowledge of the personnel matter which clearly placed the individual involved at a substantial disadvantage, risking violating the individual's privacy if this matter is discussed in public. Um, say aye. 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 Good, Tom. And any opposed? No. Second one is um, I move that we enter the executive session to discuss this personal matter under the provisions as stated. I made a motion. Second. And Tom's for the second. Judy second. Judy second. That's what We want to share the ball. And we'll, uh, we'll adjourn for a few minutes, let the camera crew to vacate the premises, and then we'll be back here in about three minutes and start. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. We're going to